uh, a quick glimpse of a um, new version of Space coming out. Uh, it's going to be shipping out in the next couple of weeks. Um, we've had a beta copy for the last several months, um, so this is pretty much, um, uh, you know, uh, similar to what uh, you guys will be getting. A um, couple of things to note, uh, Sage does not send out CDs anymore of, um, of versions as they come out. Um, you will have to essentially go online, log in through um, uh, sagesoftware.com to your account. You'll be able to then um, essentially go to the area where you can download the software. You can also ask us, and we can certainly point you in the right direction uh, if you need help. Um, we're going to cover, you know, some of the highlights of uh, the changes uh, that are going to uh, come about with uh, the new version of um, of Mac. And a couple of things that we'll mention. Uh, we'll be going through. Really, uh, there's a, a document, a pre-release guide um, that, if it's not available on our website, will be. Uh, this pre-release guide, essentially it's a PDF, uh, it's going to tell you everything that we're going through today. Um, everything in terms of the changes to AP, changes to inventory, as well as uh, really everything we're talking about today, um, you know, is, is found in greater detail in this document. So certainly, you know, if you want to get a leg up, um, uh, this is something worth reading. Now let's go through. A PowerPoint slide, and then we're actually going to jump into uh, the new version of that. So, a couple of things: uh, changes by module. Um, so, in AP, uh, we're now going to have an expanded invoice number. Uh, so, mainly we see that with, uh, uh, I guess, FedEx has a relatively long invoice number that folks have always had to cross or chop have to think about, well, now we're going to have they finally expanded that field. Um, so it's going to uh, be up to 20 characters. So I haven't changed the, uh, the uh, vendor name or customer name field, but certainly we started with the expanded invoice number. Uh, I'm going to show you the ability to inactivate both customers and vendors. Um, this is a nice feature because uh, if you don't want to delete a vendor or you don't want, essentially what we're going to have the ability to do is keep a vendor in our system, uh, inactivate them so that uh, folks, uh, you know, are not able to select them uh, unless we determine. Um, that same functionality is going to be on the AR side where we'll be able to inactivate a customer. We'll also be able to run reports that um, uh, essentially, you know, so show me all of my active vendors or active customers only. So there'll be some extra functionality given to uh, the ability to inactivate a vendor or a customer. Also in AP, um, we're now going to have a function where we'll be able to uh, to display check the cleared. So if you're in vendor maintenance and you're in a check tab, um, you will be able to see if the check is cleared. Um, you may know that uh, in the bank rec module, um, once your checks are cleared and you purge um, those transactions, they're gone. Uh, the only record you have is essentially the uh, paper copy of the bank uh, reconciliation register that you keep. So now you'll have you know one extra step, at least in AP, that shows you um, that your check has been cleared. And we can then do that um, uh, for future reporting if we wanted to. So certainly a nice feature. Uh, in ARS, though, you know, again, we're going to see um, how we inactivate a customer, much like an AP. Another big change, uh, the ability to pre-auth uh, credit cards. So, um, for those of you using uh, Sage Payment Solutions, um, currently if you have a pre-authorization for a sale, and that invoice or sales order is for $1,000, um, currently you are pre-authorizing $1,000. Um, well, you know, now we're going to have the ability to actually pre-authorize a larger amount. So if you don't know how much um, 
uh, you're going to be uh, processing and shipping charges for the customer. You can actually pre-authorize in this example a thousand fifty dollars, um, but then decide to charge only a thousand forty dollars. But certainly, this has been a, a sticky issue for some time with credit card processing. Now we're going to be able to pre-off um, credit cards uh, uh, for a different amount, and that's uh, on the sales order or invoice. Uh, okay. uh, in the inventory module, a big change, which I'll show you when we uh, dive into the product, um, a lot of folks are clamoring that um, uh, item maintenance they were used to item inquiry, uh, you know, popping up and giving you quantity on hand and quantity on SL. And since uh, version 4.4, um, that was moved to the third tab. And now you're going to see that we've moved this back up to the first tab. Okay. And again, once we get into the uh, into the system, I'll show you how that's going to work. A couple of other changes uh, in the bank rec module. Um, really, it's uh, um, dealing with ACH payments made in the AP module. Those transactions are now going to post to the bankrupt module by vendor. So we'll get uh, really greater visibility in the bankrupt module uh, in terms of uh, clearing those transactions. Currently, you're not able to clear those transactions, but at least now uh, you'll have some visibility when you're doing your bankrupt. That, um, uh, that the ACH payments exist. Paperless Office will now be compatible with most email systems. Um, we've had some folks use uh, Paperless Office to send out uh, purchase orders, bill numbers, invoices, statements, uh, mostly through Outlook. Um, but now with um, with a lot of companies moving to a virtualized mail system, um, we really haven't run into an issue with Yahoo, but we have had issues with Gmail. Well, that's finally getting resolved with uh, Sage 2013. So if your company is using Gmail uh, as its uh, uh, mail application, um, it will now be compatible uh, with it. It will be able to use it going forward. Move to the cloud. So Sage has been talking about uh, really moving to the cloud and having software as a service um, as really a, a initiative that they're um, taking to all of their products. Well, what does that mean? Uh, that means that as, as much as they can start um, offloading uh, off of the software and um, using outside services that they can, uh, in this case, uh, there's going to be four products that we're talking about that are essentially moving to the cloud, and I'll describe that with each of these. So credit card processing. So first off, credit card data is no longer going to be stored in your system um, beginning of stage 2013. It will be offloaded to uh, uh, Sage Payment Solutions, what they call Sage Exchange. Um, essentially, when you process a credit card transaction, um, it will be going out to Sage Payment Solutions, grabbing their data, and um, you know, processing the transaction, and then essentially pushing the authorization back to you. Credit card, uh, your, your client's credit card information uh, will no longer be stored within that. Uh, currently, oops, go back, how about that? Currently, that information is uh, is encrypted in your system, beginning with page 2013. Uh, page has decided uh, you know, not to have uh, not to have all of the security requirements uh, built into the software. Instead, uh, they're having page payment solutions manage that information and the Anytime you're retrieving credit card information, um, it just means that you're going to Sage Payment Solutions um, and their secure site and grabbing it. Now, along with that, uh, PC Charge will no longer be supported. Uh, so, if you're currently using PC Charge, um, you will be okay uh, through version 4.5, but you will not be able to. Um, 
process transactions for a piece of charge with uh, uh, with H2 2013. So certainly, you know, before we uh, determine if you guys are ready to upgrade and are you ready to upgrade, uh, certainly PC charge will be uh, a point of contention. Um, currently, Sage Payment Solutions um, is the only uh, uh, credit card processor uh, that uh, support it. And I know that there's other third party applications that are essentially um, trying to um, uh, to offer clients uh, an alternative, but uh, certainly, you know, right off the bat, uh, if you have PC charge, uh, it's not going to work with page 2013. Field tax is powered by Avitax. You guys are, uh, for folks uh, who are using Avitax, um, uh, with it, nothing's really going to change. Um, if you're used to Avitax, you're used to uh, the fact that um, your sales taxes are essentially stored uh, offline. So when you process the tax transaction, what MAP is doing is going out to Avitax's website, uh, grabbing the uh, tax rate and the tax amount, and then sending it back to MAP. So uh, much like we described credit card information in the cloud, well, uh, Avitax is already in the cloud. A couple of other things, shipping powered by SmartLink. So um, uh, if you have a third-party shipping application like uh, uh, Starship or uh, even our uh, shipping product, um, those products are uh, not going to be supported as of 2013 uh, because Sage is essentially going to move to this uh, fairly integrated uh, product uh, that essentially has all the information needed to process FedEx, UPS, uh, USPS, and other third-party packages. So very robust product um, that will be integrated uh, with that. Tax forms provided by Atrix. Uh, again, you guys are used to currently, you have the ability uh, for electronic reporting and ATM payroll um, to use Atrix. Uh, once you set up your account, essentially the information can be asked uh, goes over to Atrix and, um, and you go through what amounts to a wizard uh, to eventually you know, prepare a, a 1099 or a, a W-2. Um, this will continue through 2013. In fact, after 2013, I should say beginning with age 2014, you will not be printing 1099 or W-2s uh, from within MAP will only be done through Atrix. So if you haven't gotten used to uh, using Atrix and getting a, an account set up, uh, you still have the ability to do it with Sage 2013. Um, uh, but certainly, you know, after that, um, printing from within math is going to roll away. So, you know, Sage is, is essentially moving to the cloud as, uh, as they describe in a lot of the marketing material. Okay, a couple of other changes. Crystal Reports 2011. So um, currently with version 4.5, you're running Crystal Reports uh, 11.5. Well, now there's going to be a uh, new version of Crystal. So a couple of things with Crystal Reports 2011. There's no real table changes. Uh, so all of your forms and custom reports from version 4.5 should come over um, just fine. And of course, with a newer release of Crystal Reports from a Crystal Reports designer perspective, there's just more functionality. 64-bit ODDC driver installed. So uh, this is nice if you have uh, Excel or Access, um, and it's a 64-bit version. And currently, uh, you're not able to use it. You can't, uh, if you're doing a, a database query from that, uh, into a 64-bit uh, version of Excel for access, it can't be done. Well, um, with 2013, we will be able to because it will be supported with a 64-bit ODPC. A couple of other things. Um, this version is a first to be fully compatible with Windows 8. That is just now coming out. Um, again, as, as um, 
as Sage continues to test out Windows 8, uh, they will make um, uh, Windows 8 backwards compatible to version 4.5 and 4.4. Um, but at least uh, currently they fully tested out Sage 2014 with Windows 8 products. And finally, uh, for those of you who are using uh, the SQL version of MAP uh, or Stage 100, um, it will be compatible with SQL Server 2012. So let's go ahead and jump into the products and we'll kind of show you some of the, uh, some of the new features that, uh, that we just described. Here, we'll go ahead and log in. So far, everything looks the same. When you log in, you're going to have a slightly different uh, flash screen. Um, there is an area where you can connect to Sage University. You can certainly log in. If we click on My Sage, there's going to be an area where you can join. And you can, there's going to be some uh, pre-recorded webcasts from everything from GL to AP to inventory. Um, you can look for training courses um, from Sage. There's certainly a lot of good information right at your fingertips. Now let's jump into uh, some of the changes, changes we described in AP. So in AP, first off, the expanded invoice number. When we're in invoice data entry, and we punch in every property, you will see that we will now have the ability to type up up to 20 characters, and they will be stored throughout the system. So very nice. Currently, um, you know, we can't go that high. Certainly, I've talked to folks who have text invoices, other invoices that get that long. Um, Sage has finally made the change. This will be, uh, this is nice because it's not only in AP, but certainly in PO. It's throughout the system. In vendor maintenance, we'll have the ability to inactivate a customer. If I come into, or I'm sorry, inactivate a vendor. Um, there's some functionality involved here. So we have uh, vendor status. If I I'll change this to inactive, it is going to warn me. It's going to tell me I can't change it while there is a um, while there is a balance or there's activity. So um, you're not able to inactivate a customer while there's a you know essentially an open PO, an open um, an open invoice for that customer. So you kind of have to wait until you know that uh, vendor is, is processed before you can inactivate. And it will essentially tell you, you know, where there's, you know, activity for that vendor that is stopping you from being able to inactivate. But in this case, once you inactivate a customer, uh, if you can, then there will be reports that will allow you to uh, filter by active or inactive customers in this case, um, if they show me only active customers, show me inactive customers. Um, so you'll be able to run reports uh, that essentially allow you to filter um, by active and inactive vendors and customers. Finally, in vendor maintenance, when we go to the check tab, you're going to see that there's an additional field called cleared. In fact, even in the invoice tab, we'll be able to research if the check is cleared. Now, this is uh, really nice for a couple of purposes. Well, one, you could certainly come in here and find out if the check has been cleared. Um, but certainly, you know, we didn't have this functionality before. But separately, as I mentioned, um, after your check has been cleared in the bankrupt module and they get purged, um, you really don't have any uh, a way to find out what checks have been cleared. Well, now that that information is going to be stored in the AP module, we'll be able to help you write a crystal report to determine what checks have been cleared. Okay. 
essentially a simple report that's going to say, you know, go to the check history table, find out all of my check numbers, and have they cleared yes or no. So, very nice feature. We can certainly see it, you know, again, in the invoices, um, tab, in the transaction tab, and of course in the check tab. Um, as I mentioned before, uh, in AR, the uh, one big change in AR uh, is going to be the uh, ability to inactivate a customer. So we have the same functionality where, in this case, I created a, a customer that did not have any activity, and I changed it from active to inactive. Very simple. The other nice change for folks that have, uh, that have moved from 4.3 to 4.4 um, and have had to deal with uh, item, maybe a slight pain of having the quantity tab. Essentially, this in versions 4.3 and before was um, item inquiry. And folks would essentially have this open throughout the day to see you know, where their inventory stood. Well, with version 4.4, page moves it to tab 3. So folks would have to open up item maintenance and then scroll over to tab 3. Two steps to essentially get to what used to be a one step process. Well, now um, you'll notice that it's going to be at the bottom of, um, uh, of the first tab. So if you open up item maintenance, you can scroll over, and you've got your um, item quantities on tab 1. A lot of people complained and they just decided, you know what, <laughs> let's go ahead and put this back in the first half. So with page 2013, that will be available. Now, uh, a couple of things. Uh, uh, as I said, with uh, APH payments, um, APH payments in, we go to AP setup, AP option. Mm -hmm. And we go to ACH. We'll be able to post the bank reconciliation in detail with this checked off. Essentially, when we process an ACH payment, um, we'll have that visibility in the bank rec module. So when it comes time to reconcile at the end of the month, those transactions will be there. It will be essentially listed uh, by transaction and not summarized. So it's very nice for reconciliation purposes. And this is really the big changes. There's going to be one final change we're going to go through. Uh, and that's how visual process flows. Now what Sages is doing with, uh, with this version um, is they're adding uh, process flows uh, so that clients can have kind of a one-stop uh, shop of, of um, what they need to do uh, to process invoices, to process POs. So this new module called Visual Process Flows essentially walks you through the different process flows in that. So in this case, we're going to say Sales Entry and Invoice. I click on this process flow. I'm going to get a, a screen that essentially shows me uh, the process flows for the Sales Order module. Start Starts off with entering orders, um, then moves into shipping, then moves into invoicing and posting. What you're able to do here is essentially bypass having to drill into the different you know, functions of that module and say, you know what, if I want to go into sales order, oops, 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 sorry about that, that was a report. Uh, I want to click on enter order. And now I'm in sales order entry. I can also have invoice open up at the same time. So really, uh, you know, folks have been asking, you know, is there a logistical process flow with math? And uh, and what Sage is going to be doing with Sage 2013 is, you know, not only having the ability to drill into different areas using this process flow. So they're going to start expanding. We have the ability to print, the ability to run reports. So you kind of have everything in a, uh, in a nice, easy-to-view um, workflow for sales orders. We're going to have that for 
um, return good. We're going to have that on the uh, receivable side, on the purchase side, the payment side. So you'll be able to access everything you need to do right from these buttons without having to drill into the many, many options. Okay? So certainly um, it, it's a different approach to um, you know, the starting your day. We certainly have folks, you know, uh, that over the years we told them, you know what, go ahead and make shortcuts up top here for everything you need to do. Well, um, now you don't have to worry about shortcuts because you've got everything in one screen. Okay. Right now, this is really the first, uh, you know, entry into this uh, type of workflow. Um, we talked to Sage, you know, about the future. They may decide on, you know, having customized workflows. Um, so this is kind of, you know, what you see is what you get for uh, uh, phase one. Uh, but certainly, they're going to continue this um, uh, you know, workflow process going forward and giving users more functionality to create their own customized workflow. Okay, a couple of things to note. Uh, you've heard me say Sage 2013. Um, you may have noticed if you've upgraded the 4.5 that uh, uh, you get a window that pops up that says Sage Mac 9200 will become Sage 100. The Sage is certainly um, putting a lot of money in the marketing. So um, you want to do Sage 100 uh, exclusively going forward. And then you use Mac 9 and Mac 200, it will become Sage 100. Essentially, Mac 90 is Sage 100 standard. Mac 200 is Sage 100 advanced. And Mac 200 for SQL is Sage 100 premium. Uh, likewise, going forward, instead of uh, uh, understanding version 4.4 or 4.5, it will be page 2013, next it will be page 2014, and so on. So uh, certainly, you know, easier to understand what version you want. Um, there still will be product updates throughout the, throughout the year, um, and they will be product updates and add functionality and certainly add fixes. Uh, but they will be Sage 2013, Product Update 1, Product Update 2, and so on. Okay. Well, that was a, a quick, you know, uh, synopsis of what's coming. Again, you should be, uh, you know, uh, the materials will be downloadable. Uh, Sage 2013 should be coming out in the next two to three weeks. Um, uh, we'll be getting emails from Sage saying it's out there and available. Um, you could certainly contact us uh, if you need help downloading. And of course, if you need help upgrading, uh, certainly let us know and we'll get you guys scheduled on a system. Right, I'll certainly uh, open up the floor to questions. If there are any questions. All right, everybody, the lines are unmuted. So if you have any questions, just go ahead and speak up. Uh, my question is, well, we need to I think I understood if you're asking if you'll have to upgrade to be compatible with Windows 8. So um, uh, right now, Sage 2013 uh, will be compatible with Windows 2, with, I'm sorry, uh, with Windows 8. Uh, However, um, you know, Sage is essentially, you know, looking into backwards compatibility. So right now, uh, Windows 8 is not compatible with versions 4.4 and 4.5, but that's not to say that in the next several months it will be. So do you have to upgrade? I don't think you have to upgrade uh, because Sage will be, you know, making Windows 8 backwards compatible. Um, but certainly right to that, you know, 4 or 5 will be. Okay, thanks. Okay. Excellent. Any other questions? One more thing. We will be having um, a, uh, uh, a fourth quarter user group in all of our offices. 
So feel free. We'll probably be, you know, going through another mini, um, you know, just like this was a, a mini demonstration of 2013 and what it can do. So certainly, you know, if you guys get email to sign up uh, in December for a year-end user group, um, certainly we encourage you to do that. Any other questions? Well, we get. Uh, uh, will we get notified when our software is ready to download, and will we have somebody be working with us in case? Well, uh, what Sage normally does is uh, they send all of their customers an email notification that the product is ready to download. Um, if you haven't received it, you know you may not be on the spec listing for your company, but certainly. Um, if you receive it and you need help, you can certainly call up our support line and we can help you download it. Um, likewise, if you just feel you haven't gotten it, you can call up our support line and we can certainly send you a link to, uh, to download it. Okay. 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 I'm concerned about it, Sean. It's uh, all new. So. I'm sorry? Um, well, it's it's all new for me to be downloaded, so I'm sure I'll probably uh, be yeah, turned around on some uh, support there, for sure. Yeah, I was, I, I'm not sure I understood the question, but I think it was along the lines of, if, if you need help with downloading it, so the email that Sage sends uh, has a link to download their software. You do have to have an account with Sage, you know, username and password to uh, be able to download. So, you know, again, if, if you get the link and you can't download it, certainly call up the support line and we can help you download it. All right. Thank you. Okay. Sure.